This is a tutorial for an application named MIDI Touch Bar, which transforms the touch bar of a Mac laptop into a MIDI controller. Let's get started by clicking on the little MIDI icon in the top portion of the screen. The option we want to choose is Show MIDI Touch Bar. Now if we look down at our laptop, we'll notice we have two volume faders and a couple of buttons in the touch bar display. To modify this, let's go back to our drop down and choose Customize Touch Bar. MIDI Touch Bar allows you to click and drag the elements you wish to use into and out of the touch bar display. You drag the mouse below the bottom of the screen so that it highlights an element in the touch bar. When you want to get rid of an element, click and drag up. I'm getting rid of these two buttons and instead I'm going to make my touch bar display faders one, two, three, and four. I'll do this by clicking and dragging the elements I want down to the bottom of my screen. Now I've already got faders two and three, so I'm going to click and drag faders one and four. You can see here when I grab fader four, I'll put it all the way to the right and it populates down there at the bottom. Once I click done, I'll click customize controls to specify the MIDI CC for each fader. And I simply touch the fader with my finger as you'll see me do here, and it will automatically bring up the MIDI values of that slider. So let's make fader one CC 11. Fader 2, CC1, Fader 3, CC19, and Fader 4, CC7. These might seem like random numbers, but I'm actually configuring my faders to control elements of Spitfire's Discover, BBC, Orchestral Sample Library. I'll pull up the user interface to show you what I mean here. See, the slider on the far left of my touch bar controls the fader furthest to the left in Spitfire's UI. And as we move to the right of the touch bar, so too do we move to the right in Spitfire. You'll see fader 2 is controlling CC1, and that's controlling what is called dynamics in this user interface. It also controls the modulation wheel. Now I'm using fader 3, and that's controlling CC19, which is the reverb in Spitfire. And finally, fader 4 controls the volume fader up in the top right-hand corner here of the Spitfire user interface. Now I'm going to create a crescendo effect for some string chords using fader 2. I'll record the automation data over the top of my MIDI notes using the overlap slash merge setting. And let's go ahead and just take a listen to what that sounds like as I record CC1 with fader 2. If I look inside the piano roll here, I can see the automation data I've recorded for MIDI CC1. Let's end this video by giving this one more listen and following along with the automation curve I just recorded. <laughs> 